Right. First, uh, welcome for coming at the hour of lunch. I'm also suffering and I'm hungry, so I will try to be fast. I only have 20 minutes. Uh, I'm here to speak about privacy in practice for self-hosting. And when I say self-hosting, it's not only for hosting your own stuff, it's for hosting for other people. Because when you host your own stuff, usually you do not have privacy with your own data. Um, I would like to ask to people to not take too much picture of me. Um, if possible, zero. It's a talk about privacy, so I expect people to respect that. Uh, quickly about me, I'm a system administrator working at Red Hat in the open source and standard team. We help upstream projects with uh, various uh, things such as community management, event management, design, and in my case, cleaning everything the developer did on the infrastructure when everything is broken, uh, which is a topic quite interesting, so I do a lot of security stuff. And I try to care also about privacy for community. I have a very strong opinion, as my uh, co-worker can attest. Uh, so, yeah, what is privacy? Uh, for me, privacy is linked, as I say, to security, which is linked to CIA, not the bad guy in the James Bond movie, but uh, confidentiality, integrity, and availability, especially the part about uh, confidentiality, where you want your data to be kept secret and, for example, not being used by bad actors, and which is something that usually happen when you start to trust uh, Google, Amazon, Facebook, and et cetera, et cetera. As I assume that there is maybe some people uh, who were not here since the beginning of the track and are just listening because I'm here, I want to remind quickly why the GAFA are bad for privacy. So first, it's a question of contradictory incentive. On one end, I know people there and I know they want to protect privacy. On the other hand, the whole business model is getting private data and reselling them. So you cannot really get something completely private when you need that um, to get money and to live, like getting bread, getting food and everything. It's quite important for them, as it is for me. Sometimes I fight back against government and, well, sometimes I do not. And the main, and I think the biggest issues, the ones that we tend to... Uh, forget it's the lack of diversity in technology. When you ask someone in San Francisco, it's easy to say, yeah, I want to share all my picture on whatever Google decides to do because nothing bad will happen to me. Well, when you are someone in some restrictive country and more restrictive than a current USA, I will not make joke about it, right? Not now. Well, maybe you have a different point of view, but you are not working at Google and maybe Google is not asking you anything because you are just a user, well, maybe they will not take care of anything you want. And that's where self-hosting is quite important because it goes privacy beyond TLA. So it's not TLA's uh, uh, control system. It's a three-letter agency like NSA, FSB, or DGSE, which is four-letter, but you see the, you see the point. And f in order to do that, you need to think about the trace model. Uh, which is basically try to decide here is what people want to do, like bad guy for generic bad. So most of the time people say, yeah, there is a state level adversary and there is NSA and China and everything wants to get to me. Most of the time, no, unless you are a terrorist. And if you are, please do not ask questions about I'm a terrorist, what can I do during the question? So they are recorded. At worst, what you can get is the cops. Uh, there is a lot of people doing activism. And Sometimes cops just knock on your door saying, oh, you wanted to organize a protest against that uh, whatever social stuff, environmental stuff and everything. Like, we have to ask you some question. Sometimes they go to the wrong person. Sometimes they go to the right and everything. And sometimes while you are just attacked by your co-worker, that guy that you decided to uh, kill at a quake, your ex-lover with a abusive guy, maybe your neighbor because you say that his dog is really loud and you call the cop on him, or your family because you are a BSD user and they are all uh, Debian hardcore <laughs> users <laughs> and they do not need to know. So yeah, and when you think about it, privacy leak can be anything. Uh, one of the most uh, common examples is IP address. People say it's bad, but they never explain why it's bad. So for example, let's say that you are on IRC. You connect, so that's me connecting on, uh, from some provider. I join the first damn channel. And then there is someone else, Adrian, who is maybe here or not here. He was speaking one hour ago. And he connects from the same IP address. So based on that, you think, yeah, maybe they are at the same place. 
And depending on the circumstance, maybe they are at the same workplace, which is fine if we are working together. But maybe we are not working together, and why am I in the office of Aruner? Maybe we are at the same home. Well, maybe we were connecting during the night, and that's where I start to say, why I am sleeping at Adriana's house? And maybe if it was called Adriana, maybe things would be different. So that's the kind of stuff when we say privacy problem um, that can be innocent, like I'm connected from my phone there is one million person with the same IP address. Okay, no problem. I'm connected from a specific IP. Maybe there is something. And if people say, yeah, you can hash IP, no, it do not help. For example, people disconnect at the same time because network is crappy. Well, turn out that you found something. So let's back to the basics. I will focus on the web because everything is web and it's easier. I have 20 minutes. Um, so first, TLS. I mean, everybody can use Let's Encrypt. You have to use it. There is no reason to not use it, or at least no good reason. So you need to use good cipher, but uh, it's only if you want to protect from a um, state level adversary and everything. There is everything you need on Mozilla Wiki. You can use a search engine for that. I also recommend to take a look at uh, the Crypto Policy Project. Uh, it's a project aiming at uh, making one single configuration for your whole system for cryptography, like strong, future, normal, weak, which is much better than what we have now, which is uh, 20 different uh, syntax for setting every single cipher and the order for every project, um, which is bad. You can take a look at uh, HKIP, etc., etc. So um, there is a lot of Git out there. I'm not going to repeat them. But uh, what you need to do is to discuss with your, other, uh, with your user, because some of them have older browsers, like sometimes they do not have choice. Everybody can remember the old windows from the school and this kind of stuff. Uh, it depends really on what uh, they want to avoid. So if you want to protect people, you need to get some set of um, cipher, and sometimes you block access for others. So what I would recommend is to provide two vhosts, one for insecure stuff, one for secure stuff, and you can then communicate with users without trying to track them. I mean, that's the whole point of privacy, is to not track people. And set a banner to upgrade browser, this kind of stuff. Because remember, biggest threat is not always TLA. Sometimes it's just someone at your school, sometimes it's someone living with you and everything. Another option is to offer Onion services. Uh, people who do not know what this is, it's uh, Onion... Well, it's on top of Tor. You do everything with Tor. I will not explain what is Tor. I hope that someone can do it for me later. Again, 20 minutes, etc., etc. It can help to avoid uh, IP leak. It requires a specific setup. Um, currently, it's quite hard to scale properly. It's a research topic. Uh, so there is a lot of specific attack where people try to steal your key and everything. So if you want to be serious for that, you need monitoring and spend a lot of time to research what is going on. I'm pretty sure that in a few years it will be easier, but for now it's not exactly here. But that's a great idea because then you can make a talk about it for next year. Um, another issue is the use of uh, external JavaScript. Again, it's the web. You do not want to start to host uh, 1 million version of jQuery, but it turned out that it's an IP leak, so if you can avoid, well, avoid it. And now we go to the biggest issue, which is the logs. That's an issue because, well, logs are critical <coughs> if you get attacked, but the problem is trusting an attacker, it's the same as a user. I'm not saying that users are attacker, or at least not on record, but <coughs> it's kind of the same. For that, several solutions. First one, easy, no logs. No logs, no problem. It might be illegal. I'm not a lawyer. Do what you want. Sometimes a fine might be okay because it's not so expensive when compared to getting someone to jail. Sometimes it's your money, so you decide what you want. Some people try to anonymize the log, which is usually working fine. That reduces the risk of, the risk of leaks. But uh, yeah, when you have uh, something like this in the log, you can anonymize the IP address as you want. You will see that there is still my name. and. So yeah, you need to reduce information logged as soon as possible. For example, do you need a user agent? Maybe, maybe not. Do you need the IP, the referrer? Uh, one interesting trick is to use an ID for each user. And you keep the mapping of ID out of the log. So everything will be user number something. And someone asks for the log. Well, it turns out that if they do not have that mapping, because it's not on the log, you cannot do much. So that protects against accidental leak, for example, cut and passed on bug tracker, 
or automated cotton pass on bug tracker, discussion on IRC and everything. It might or might not frustrate TLA, which might or might not be a good idea. Again, it depends. And it's also nice because it is username change. Sometimes you do not want to keep a nice guy from uh, some department and get Mr. Mr. Nice Guy, or if you change name because you are married, this kind of stuff. Obviously, you need ACL for the log. If possible, separation of access, which means that you need to have more than one admin, which can be hard. If you want to avoid abuse, there is a three-step audit, audit, and audit. If possible, no direct access to log. You can use something like Elasticsearch, but I cannot recommend the tool because it's quite hard to install and it's not exactly good from a security point of view. But um, something like this, but not this. <laughs> uh, if you can get a public trail of who reads the logs, that's usually prevent people from abusing that. If you know that uh, if you are looking at the same person every day, maybe people will not do it. So there is the issue of uh, long-term storage. Um, either you decide that you do not do that, because who cares? or you decide to use aggregate log. Um, in the end, you need to decide why you need logs in the first place. Maybe if you have that for one week, it should be sufficient. Maybe you need one year because this is the law. Maybe, so you need to think about what you want and what you need. Um, another issue to keep in mind is backup. So obviously it needs to be encrypted. I say obviously, but people do not do that. You need to test them. I mean, people have seen what happened to GitLab. You need to remind. Um, one interesting question is what to do with backup when a user leaves, and that's quite complicated because sometimes a user leaves, but it's not the user. Someone gets access to the password, decide to, dec to um, destroy the account, uh, what do you do? If you do not keep backup, it's fine when people want to disappear. If you keep backup, well, if someone makes someone else disappear, you can save the day. Uh, usually what people do is two-step cleaning, like you say, okay, we clean the backup in two weeks in case you change your mind. But that's also the kind of trick that Facebook is using, so that's not great. Um, yeah, whatever you do, leak and error do happen, there is no perfect choice. Uh, something also that I try to recommend is to use open infrastructure, so you publish the configuration. That makes harder to do something fishy, like deciding suddenly to collect uh, more information, you cannot do that without being seen. In practice, not much people will read, but at least it's better. It will trust with user. It allows people to fork and decentralize. This is decentralized internet room, so it's good. Uh, if you want more information, there is a website that just started uh, two weeks ago, and if people have lots of money, you can go to scale in South, Car uh, South California. Uh, there is a whole day dedicated to that. Um, another one interesting <laughs> thing to take in account is centralized authentication. So for me, it's great. I mean, it's easier to edit and debug. That's why the cat is smiling. It permits to have two-factor authentication more easily. But uh, at the same time, it's easier to trace people because the same people will connect on one central system and it will have the same name everywhere. And most of the time, it requires upstream work. So I know that, for example, from Asoft, which is a group providing services uh, do not want to set up central authentication for political reasons. So again, no, no perfect solution. So you need to be proactive, uh, look for a way to attack privacy, which basically means be a stalker. Uh, let's be clear. Um, you need to think about sharing policy. Uh, I would recommend to see uh, what, is, um, what Mozilla is doing. So they have uh, six principles. The first one is no surprise. Surprise is great, but only for Christmas as birthday. You need to tell people what you do. Uh, that means that you mean need to make sure that they understand. Basically, do not get a lawyer to write a document to explain that. Usually, it do not work. So it needs to be tested with users, discussed with users, make sure that they understand something and not something else. You need to make sure that you give them real choice. Again, that needs to be clear. You need to discuss with user, user everything. You need to have sensitive, sensible default. Uh, if you create a system for blog, a blog is supposed to be public. If you create the same system for a private diary, it's supposed to be private. It's technologically the same stuff. You write stuff and it's recorded, but uh, the default will be different. Of course, you need to limit the data. Um, data that you do not have are data that are cannot be leaked, that can only be private. And you need to make sure that the user st stay in control and that you trust third party. Make sure that third party are taking privacy seriously and everything. 
which is quite hard to do, I think, but it's up to you to decide. Um, and yeah, and there is a whole importance of UX, um, which is by itself a whole topic that will span one hour discussion. So instead, I will just remind, discuss with user, and discuss with more than your friend, because if you are in this room, you are likely to be more paranoid than the regular user. And you may, well, you may not see that, yeah, maybe GPG is great because you can select what cipher you want, what kind, wait, what kind, oh shit, size of key you want and everything, but most people would not want to do that. They want a checkbox private and that's it. So you need to discuss with real user or more mainstream one because your friends most of the time are real. I mean, it's fine if they are not. I'm not judging anyone, but, and, yeah, so what to do to avoid sysadmin stalking? And to be honest, that's your worst case attack because that's someone who controls everything and who sometimes can be asocial. And let's face it, I'm sysadmin. Uh, that's called the confused deputy problem. There is a lot of uh, discussion about that. Again, uh, I keep repeating, my, repeating myself because when I was in university, we were saying that repetition is everything. So audit what is going on, so you can see if there is something, you can go back. Uh, that's for sysadmin. Sysadmin, if they have volunteers, they need to be aware that they will be spied on by other sysadmin and everything. Uh, the world who watch the Western stuff, I cannot speak uh, Latin or I would have said in Latin. Again, prevent direct access. If you can use config management, do it. If you cannot go to config management, come tomorrow in Gantt, learn how to do it and go back to that slide. If you want to be trendy, there is a whole serverless container stuff because if there is no server to connect, there is no problem. Um, and if there is configuration that cannot be changed because container everything, well, it cannot be changed and there is less risk of abuse. If you have more time, you can take a look at uh, various research topics such as peer and everything where people do not give you data, they give you encrypted data and you can make computation uh, on it. Uh, something like zero past, zero bin, I think is working like this, uh, the server has no knowledge or anything, everything is done client side, but uh, for more than a past bin, because that's quite limited. And to conclude, think about UX, discuss with user, I said that several times, so just to make sure you understand that, communicate, if you can push security upstream, that's great, so I do not have to do that. And data not collected is data that cannot be leaked. Um, it's quite easy. You can print it in your office. Think about it. If you want to connect, to contact me, uh, well, you can use whatever you want as long as it's IRC or mail. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you. And if you have a question, it's the right time. We have seven minutes, if I'm not wrong. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. If you do not have any question, I'm okay with people clapping for five minutes. Just for my. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, to define the use of like, uh, you know, because you haven't mentioned it, like encrypting the drive themselves. Uh, is it actually worth it for uh, for like servers and, and things like that and so on, or, is, or are you just of the opinion everything should be stateless? You shouldn't record any data. So the question is, is it worthwhile to encrypt a disk in, in a server if you do not log anything and if the data are already encrypted? Um, it depends, because you can still have someone going to the data center, taking the disk, pretending like there is power cut, changing the data and then putting it back. That's unlikely to happen, but that's something that can happen. And the other problem is, even if we need to encrypt the data, sometimes you just take out of the box a software, such as, I don't know, webmail, and most of them do not have encryption right now. You can add it, uh, but it requires to be able to code, that requires upstream to accept and everything. So if you want to get something fast, uh, maybe not. And no matter what you do, there is stuff that you cannot uh, encrypt. For example, um, you want to make sure that people do not know who can access the server, there is SSH key. You cannot encrypt them. I mean, they need to be in clear text when the service is started and this kind of stuff. So I'm pretty sure it cannot hurt uh, too much to encrypt the data. Then, of course, it becomes complicated because you need to have a specific initRD, you need to have some uh, specific uh, 
process. I know that people at Red Hat are working on that. Uh, you can take a look at uh, Nathaniel McCallum work. He is likely giving a talk somewhere at FOSDEM about it, so watch the recording. Uh, but for now, the people, uh, the people who are doing that are just using uh, out-of-the-box initRD stuff with drop B where someone connect and decrypt, and um, that works fine. You have more downtime, so you have to decide if it's okay or not. Again, uh, there is no perfect solution. You just need to decide, is it worthwhile, is, isn't it worthwhile? You can try and then change back because that server, they are supposed to be throwable. And again, config management, reinstall everything, etc., etc. So it depends. No one has any question. I cannot answer, but uh, confuse people like this. <laughs> <coughs> yep. Uh, I was thinking about doing self hosting for my house, and then I immediately bumped into the problem where you have the access to the machines because you have the access on the machine on a hardware level, and uh, so there is access to the machine on hardware level. And yep. You have laptop servers running at home, uh, so. I was I was wondering how to make sure that the users their privacy is uh, is there while still having servers at my house. It's much easier if I do uh, uh, if if I use a hosting service and I put my server somewhere in the data center um, because then most of the times the access to those servers is audited. Whilst if it's a laptop at the house, nobody knows. So there is no way for me to my users, if there would be any, <coughs> that I am not tampering the machines. Is there a way to deal with this? So the question is, if I do self-hosting in my house, I cannot prove to people that I'm not uh, doing anything with the server. I think you cannot prove it, uh, because even if it's a data center, uh, if you pay for it, you can likely access it. I can say, yeah, I am hosting something on a data center from OVH, which is a famous European provider. And if I pay enough, like if I do not take the cheapest possible way, well, I can get access to the rack and do whatever I want. And even if I do not have access at the hardware level, well, I'm root, I can refresh the BIOS, I can do whatever I want. So yeah, that's quite hard. Uh, you cannot really prove that. There is people working on it with a remote attestation and making sure that uh, you execute the code and the code is not modified with TPM and everything. I think that's still a topic of uh, open research. But in the end, if you want to delegate something to someone, you kind of have to trust that person to not fuck up the system. Because they can just refuse to do something, and that will mean a lack of availability, which can be a problem for someone. So as long as you delegate and people can decide to not do anything, that's an issue. So you have to trust someone. But yeah, that's a complicated topic, and I do not have good answer. So maybe one more question, because of one minute, two minutes? One minute. One minute. Yep. Yep, what's your, uh, um, uh, what's your preferred hardware stack to use? Obviously aiming at Intel management engine backdoors and that kind of stuff. So I tend to prefer some, uh, oh yeah, what is my preferred hardware stack to use? Well, it depends on how much people I need to host uh, for work. While we are basically getting expensive server because we want to get lots of memory to run Jenkins great and everything. At my home, when it's me paying out of my pocket with my electricity and everything, I just get cheap possible board. Uh, either Raspberry Pi because people are throwing them away and it cannot be cheaper than free. Or getting BeagleBone because it's well supported by Fedora 25 and I can add a TPM for crypto acceleration and this kind of stuff. I do run a Tor node in my house uh, because the fiber line do not feel by itself by just by me, so I can use it. And it's running fine. There is nothing for remote access except a serial port and I have the full control. It's cheap enough to not, do not have any Intel stuff and it works well, except when it's broken in upstream kernel, but let's not discuss about that. And you can get a TPM and a crypto cap, so you can do all kind of security stuff, which I do not do because I do not have time, but yeah. And it consumes almost nothing. And it's powerful enough to run a Tor node, which is doing a lot of CPU, so it should be fine for, I don't know, mail, spam filtering and everything. And it's cheap. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So. Thanks. Okay. Thanks.
Thank you very much. Thank you.